Thank you uh, 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 to the organizing, uh, organizers to, to, uh, for giving me an opportunity to talk uh, about this topic at, uh, at the conference. It's, uh, uh, I've changed the title a little bit to actually make it uh, more focused. So the title, title is uh, Getting a Grip on Touch Through Neuromechanical Coupling and Multiscaling. Uh, a very challenging problem, but uh, keeps us honest, as they say. Uh, it's a um, contribution which uh, has, genera has been generated uh, through uh, 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 a work of a large group of people of uh, uh, more than a decade of, uh, uh, of research uh, uh, grants funded through uh, largely uh, uh, European Commission. So the latest project is, uh, is the one uh, with the title at, at the top right corner called Prototouch. So apart from the group in Swansea, uh, a very a large contribution, important contribution is made by, uh, by a group in France uh, that were uh, uh, making uh, uh, tactile devices. Group in Birmingham, specialist in biotribology, group in uh, Sweden, uh, microneurography, psycho, uh, uh, psychological aspects of touch, psychophysics uh, in, in Leuven, and haptics in, in France. Uh, so uh, uh, just briefly in, in, in introduction to the, to the topic, as uh, I would expect not many people were f are familiar with this, uh, touch as um, as a sense is, is probably least known of all the, all the senses. Uh, it is considered to be a core of uh, sentience, so consciousness, and foundation of communication with the world around us. Uh, probably as old as life itself. Uh, it's the most intimate of senses, and you can see a few examples uh, 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 which uh, uh, where touch is used to express closeness and interpersonal warmth. It is often used by um, uh, uh, public figures to express uh, the warmth. Uh, uh, the one on the right is uh, 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 apparently a, a break with the royal protocol, which uh, Michelle Obama has made uh, during her visit to Buckingham Pal Palace a few years ago. But uh, if you really want to get close to the royalty, <laughs> then the best way is, is really uh, at the backside. So clearly, Prince Charles is, is very pleased with, uh, with the outcome. And uh, uh, this can only happen really in Australia. Uh, so let's have a look at really the... the, 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 the uh, uh, mechanisms that are behind the sense of touch. So uh, these through, through, uh, two or three cross-sections that I'm going to show, show the skin, the, the layers of the skin close to the surface. So the first layer that, oh, the first layer that you can see here is uh, a layer which is called stratum corneum. Uh, next to, to, to uh, stratum corneum, you can see some ridges, but which are much more uh, clearly seen on this slide here. So we have something called adhesive ridge, we have uh, uh, glandular ridge, and we also have these uh, papilla, uh, which, uh, as you will see on the next slide, actually contain the first mechanoreceptor that I'm going to mention, and the one that we'll probably spend most of the time looking at. So it's the uh, so-called Meissner corpuscle. Uh, you can see it here uh, magnified 3,000 times, and you can see it here magnified 5,000 times. These dots here are the already uh, parts of the uh, nerve, which is cut with the, with the little black dots showing mitochondria. You can see clear sort of layered structure of this uh, uh, mechanoreceptor. So uh, uh, I'll come back to, the, to, to this particular uh, 
uh, mechanoreceptor. But what is important to remember is there is uh, uh, two of these papilla per each fingerprint in the finger. And they uh, are distributing, distributed uh, uh, so densely that uh, there are several hundreds of those in the, in the tip of the finger. Uh, in addition to, to, to uh, uh, the, the Meissner corpuscle, I will also mention uh, the, the so-called Merkel cell uh, complex, which uh, is uh, uh, in, in its uh, lar uh, enlargement, which is uh, uh, quite substantial, showed here. And you can see the cells over here interacting with the, with the end of the nerve. So the nerve actually doesn't interact directly with the, with the cells, so that the, the communication is through the uh, synaptic connection. So the Merkel cell sits inside the ba basal layer, which is uh, inside the, 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 uh, the ridge. Uh, if we look at, uh, schematically at, the, uh, uh, at these, these, these layers close to the skin, in addition to the to the uh, uh, Meissner and Merkel corpuscle, we also have two additional ones, which are uh, known as Raffini corpuscle. So you can see a, a very particular type of uh, uh, structure of this mechanoreceptor, which is largely responsible for the uh, uh, identifying stretching of the skin. And then, uh, 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 the, the mechanoreceptor that sits deeper in the skin, which is uh, a very peculiar onion-type structure, which is largely responsible to, to uh, uh, identify uh, vibration. So this mechanoreceptor is sensitive to vibrations which are over 200 hertz and filters largely the, the static deformation. So all of those are then connected with the fast myelinated nerves with the central neural system, so first to the spine and, uh, and then to the neural system, and some of them transfer information uh, uh, by adapting to, to mechanical stimuli slowly, so there are two types of those slowly adapting mechanoreceptors, and these are the Merkel cells and the Ruffinis, while the rapidly adapting mechanoreceptors, so that's the Reisner, uh, Meissner corpuscle, uh, is, uh, is uh, 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 identified, as, as we said, in the, in the popular, uh, uh, in, the popular uh, in this dome. Um, in addition, so the, to, to make things even more complicated, and in addition to, to the mechanoreceptors, skin is uh, uh, densely populated by, by simply nerves, which are largely responsible. So without any, any uh, uh, mechanoreceptors at the end, and uh, uh, these nerves uh, typically conduct uh, uh, much slower than the, 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 the ones which are thick and my myelinated. So uh, these type of mechano, so, so nerves are actually responsible for, the, for, the, uh, uh, for generating the pain and, uh, and uh, uh, telling us about the temperature, cold and, uh, and uh, hot. Uh, first sort of attempts to identify uh, the, the, the sort of uh, mechanics uh, uh, of touch uh, was due to, to experiments co conducted largely in, in, in Sweden, technique which is called microneurography, and uh, it consists of a, of a needle which is attached at uh, typically upper arm and connected to a nerve, and then electrical impulse is simply measured as it propagates from the uh, from the sense of, from, from the place where the, the mechanical stimulus is uh, introduced. So typical signal would look something like this. It consists of effectively 
the, the, the action potentials that are propagating to a particular site. So this is the neural signal that then gets interpreted in the brain as a sense of touch. So as a, as a collection of these neural signals will actually be interpreted as a, as a, 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 new, a sense of touch to be more precise. So uh, techniques, technique looks something like this. This is the way that uh, in, 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 in the field of microneurography uh, researchers contribute, so they are typically volunteers in, in these experiments. And uh, I will uh, particularly uh, identify this slide here. You can see the grating on, uh, on uh, specimens which are going to be tested. So we'll measure the, the a response uh, due to sliding of the finger of the over different gratings of the of the of the surface and compare that to to uh, uh, the the modeling that we will actually do here so uh, uh, what uh, what type of information we actually obtain from these mechanical receptors so uh, uh, Anything to do with the shape of, of, of the object, particularly sharpness, position, texture, stiffness, uh, and uh, lots of simple tasks that we actually do by our hands are more or less uh, controlled by the, the sense of touch. So if uh, uh, these particular nerves are blocked, then uh, we would simply be incapable of performing a very simple manipulations. Uh, some of those you can see here, uh, tennis racket, coffee, keys, particularly difficult, and uh, holding uh, a particularly wet glass is not easy, but there is a constant feedback mechanism that actually goes to the brain and back to the, to the muscles to impart a particular force uh, to hold the, the, the glass. Very difficult to teach a robot to do that. So main difficulties in the, in the whole uh, sort of problem as, as we have identified is uh, that uh, mechanisms of mechanotransduction are, are really uh, very, very poorly known. They were virtually unknown when we started the project about 10 years ago, but there were some important advances made over the last 10 years. There is no clear link between the structure of the mechanoreceptors and, uh, and their function. They are very difficult to grow in vitro, so experiments are typically done on, 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 uh, uh, in vivo. Uh, what is the role of different neural signals in generating sense of touch? I think that is still uh, largely an open problem, and to make things even more complicated, tribology of the, of the finger part is very complex. I even didn't mention sweat glands which constantly supply certain amount of humidity which changes the, the properties in terms of contact and friction. So our approach was to really bring all the knowledge that we had in, in nonlinear solid mechanics, particularly involving all the material modeling, frictional contacts, uh, uh, and multi-scaling, and uh, try to develop uh, uh, some coupling uh, uh, approaches to uh, relate mechanical stimulus and uh, neural signaling uh, in order to be able to generate action potentials. Uh, so the main objectives uh, throughout the work, for, in particular for our group, uh, were uh, to, to understand uh, the mechanics uh, of, at the finger pad, but both at, at macroscopic level of the finger pad and also down to the cellular level, and then try to uh, postulate mechanisms uh, uh, of the mechanotransduction that, that, that take place at this cellular level. I will, uh, if, if time allows, have a look at some of the technological apl applications of this work. Uh, not much to be said about frictional contact. Uh, uh, the standard technology we've implemented in explicit, implicit uh, 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 version 
both Lagrangian multipliers and, uh, and uh, penalty type approaches with all the enhancements. And uh, if anybody has worked in friction would realize that you need the whole machinery in place in some cases to, to get through, the, through, through challenging problems. Uh, one that uh, is relatively simple to do and we started with is, is really try to get some essential understanding of, uh, of uh, properties of the finger pad. So this is the student in Swansea and uh, uh, she has uh, modeled her, 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 her finger in three dimensions here and we have picked up the material properties. These can actually be done we have developed some experimental techniques which actually can get these properties uh, uh, pretty accurately. And then uh, uh, model the simple sorts of uh, actions of the finger. Uh, one particular feature that we needed to, to be careful about is that gross and effective contact interface are really not the same. So if you look at uh, the, the experiment here, the, the, the contact is actually made between the finger pads and the contacting surface. So uh, uh, we needed to take that into account when, when actually modeling uh, the, the, the relationship between the contact force and, uh, and the displacement. And it's uh, very interesting uh, that uh, relatively simple uh, sort of Hertz type relationship can be used to predict the, the relationship between the contacting area and the, and the force. So slightly modified power law type relationship which gives very good uh, and accurate relationship between uh, the force and the displacement. So what one can also do sliding experiments and generate uh, these typical sort of uh, uh, hysteresis type uh, uh, results. Uh, in order really to extract information at uh, cellular level, we obviously can't do that on the same model. Uh, and this is almost uh, a, a, a classical canonical example where multiscaling uh, can be applied because there is a clear separation of scale. So mechanoreceptors uh, of the order of one micron and, uh, and fingers, fingerprints of the order of uh, 10 millimeters. So uh, all of the machinery that we have developed in the context of multiscaling described in uh, numerous papers, we have actually used and generated the model of the, of the, that now represents the, the microanatomy of the, of the Meissner corpuscle. So you can see clearly the layers that uh, uh, separate the, the so-called Schwann cells and inside the Schwann cells, the, these cuts will also cut through the, through the neurons. So the model that uh, we have here is on the macro scale finger and on the micro scale, uh, uh, basically an RVE which incorporates the, the detailed model of the, of the Meissner corpuscle. We have seeded this corpuscle in corresponding places along the, the, the expected position, which corresponds closely to the, to the uh, placements uh, near the fingerprints, and then uh, also looked at uh, the properties which uh, we could reasonably well establish knowing what uh, 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 particular uh, material is, is uh, 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 represented within the corpuscle. So the for, for collagen, we can extract pretty well the, the properties for the Schwann lamella, axon membrane, and so on. We have also uh, uh, looked very carefully at the membrane itself. And that is very important because the, the we will use the information at the membrane level in order to help us uh, trans transduce mechanical signal uh, and uh, into, into electrical signal. So uh, our postulate at a time which uh, has been supported by uh, uh, 
several works that existed uh, at a time when we started was that there are basically two mechanisms, one which uh, is essentially stretching of the, of the cellular membrane and another one which is tethering, so basically very, very similar to what happens, for example, in, 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 in hair cells in ear. So there is something like a tether that, uh, due to the mechanical deformation, essentially opens up these so-called ion channels. So I'll come back to that uh, in a moment. So uh, simulation that we did at that time is, uh, is shown here. So the extract, uh, this is what happens with the, with the RVE as we move the finger along the uh, grated surface. We can extract the signal. Uh, so on the left, uh, uh, we have uh, looked at, at several uh, uh, possibilities. So on the left, we have a stretch of the membrane. And on the right, we have uh, the, the difference that is in displacement between the, the uh, layers of the membrane, which is induced by tethering. In red, we also show what happens if there are no fingerprints. So the fingerprints clearly significantly enhance the signal that is uh, uh, transferred to the cellular level at the mechanoreceptor. At the mechanoreceptor, situation gets rather more complicated. So uh, at a time when we started, the, the, the really understanding was almost not there. Uh, uh, but then over, over the last five to 10 years, the, the, it, it, the, the, the knowledge regarding the, the mechanical transduction seemed to have started to, to sort of appear. Uh, it seems that uh, the, the transduction really is mostly due to the, the, the so-called ion channels that exist along the sort of membrane and uh, uh, membrane of the, of the axon, neuron. Uh, and uh, uh, these channels then interact directly with the uh, with, uh, uh, mechanoreceptor, as in the case of Pacinian or Meissner, because they're simply embedded inside the mechanoreceptor or communicate uh, with the mechanoreceptor through the synapse like connections, such as in the case of Merkel cell. Uh, the difficulty is that there is now about hundreds or hundreds of different ion channels. Uh, the topic is so hot that uh, 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 there is a Nobel Prize in 91 awarded to, to uh, 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 researchers uh, for, for identifying ion channels um, and their role. Uh, in 2003, there is another Nobel Prize identified for elucidating uh, mechanics and chemistry of a particular type of ion channel, which is called potassium channel. So um, really, the work is still going on, and there are lots of question marks about the, the, uh, the mechanisms at, at molecular level. Um, Furthermore, there are also issues regarding the, the uh, sort of mechanisms by which these physical parameters are encoded into, into these action potentials. So the, the, the action potential is something that we can see here, and this is something that we can measure. Uh, this here is, is a mechanical signal, so this is basically just, uh, just uh, duration of, uh, of, uh, of a force over time, for the rapidly adapting, uh, corp uh, uh, such as Meissner corpuscle, the, the uh, firing will take place only when the force changes rapidly, changes rapidly. So there is certain speed which is required, and the firing takes place once, and then very quickly it, it is dumped out. For the slowly adapting mechanoreceptor, Firing takes place over the longer period of time, but as you can see here, adapts even in this case. So for the longer duration, you would expect even this to, be, to disappear. This here is a, a firing that typically 
is induced by the uh, pure nerve, so the nerve without a mechanical receptor, and this is something that we will actually feel as a pain. So there is no adaptivity, and the pain will actually persist. Uh, so clearly, there are different mechanisms that are linked to the, to the uh, uh, structure of particular mechanical receptor. Uh, and uh, types of, of uh, ion channels that, uh, that uh, uh, each of these mechanical receptors would actually be, be uh, 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 would have. So uh, to, to quantify the, 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 this uh, uh, coupling between uh, mechanical stimulus and, uh, and uh, uh, neural signal, one needs to go back to sort of origins of the, of the uh, models that were used in generating action potentials. So the first model is due to uh, Hodgkin and Huxley, which uh, in a series of papers have actually developed uh, 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 a model that is known as a Hodgkin-Huxley model. Uh, the first one that actually gives the, the the full active uh, membrane properties. Uh, the model contains, so it's a set of uh, differential equations which are coupled. So it contains information about uh, the, the transport of ion channels through a number of uh, 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 the, the ion gates. So uh, in this particular case, this is Potas potassium, uh, this is potassium, so this is sodium channel, and this here is something that's called the uh, leaky current, which is uh, connected with the chl chloride ions. Um, there is a clear similarity between a standard type circuit models and uh, these differential equations. Uh, they were, however, successfully, the model looks relatively simple, but they were successful in identifying the material properties, uh, alpha, beta, uh, GNA, GL, EL. So all of those are relatively stable and uh, more or less are within very small tolerances identified in any living creature. So they were able to actually identify these parameters and, and feed them to the, to, the, to the model to generate the, the spikes. Important aspect of the model is, are, are these M's, N's, and H's. So they control the probability of the channel being, for M, it is open, so the, the, the sodium channel open, the, the potassium channel open, or H, uh, uh, describing the, the sort of uh, possibility of uh, sodium channel being inactive. So uh, when put together, these will generate the action potentials. So our work has actually been, been to simplify these, mo these models because it would take really uh, a very long time in order to, to uh, fully describe the, the uh, action potentials uh, over the, the, the required period of time. So we have simplified and developed something which we call a reduced model, which uh, uh, generates the values for the conductance of the, of the channels as a product of uh, uh, the, the maximum conductance, possibility that the channel is open, and then possibility that the channel is not made inactive. Uh, importantly, these probabilities have actually been linked to the mechanical stimulus through the Boltzmann function. Uh, so typical technique that uh, in statistical thermodynamics is used when uh, uh, sort of energy is, is uh, measured for, for uh, uh, changes in, in states. So uh, there are two models here that uh, uh, needed to be sort of matched, fitted against the experiments, which we have successfully done. And uh, these will then change the conductance of the channel and, uh, and uh, 
in a sense, uh, provide this uh, uh, sensitivity of the channels to the mechanical stimulus. So this model is then linked to something that we call integrate and fire model, very simple, which uh, uh, is a very simple circuit which uh, is, is equipped with this gate here, uh, which uh, reacts to the, so it gets closed when the, the threshold of the voltage is, uh, is met. When this threshold is met, then uh, simply the spike is fired. Uh, this threshold can actually be relatively well identified with its, with its voltage value, uh, about 100 uh, millivolts, and uh, the, the, uh, this particular model has actually been just enhanced in our work by, uh, by uh, the, the conductances that ha I have just discussed. So the model is then linked into a large-scale uh, simulator which con connects mechanical and, uh, and neural signal. So the mechanical signal uh, changes the conductance which uh, generates the, the, the currents which generates then the spikes. So uh, we built that into now large-scale model of the experiment that you saw earlier on earlier slides and uh, uh, varied the grating and for each grating we've done a number of experiments changing slightly the position and the force of the finger. This time it's a three-dimensional model but contains very detailed models of the mechanoreceptors. In this particular case it's, uh, it's Reissner and Merkel cells. So better view of the Reissner is here, so uh, uh, the, the structural model contains axon that propagates through the corpuscle. The red is largely collagen, and the green here is a Schwann cell. So uh, we are particularly interested to measure what happens along the surface of this axon, uh, which is given here. And we also measure what happens with the surface over, over the, the, the Merkel cells on the side of the synapse. So uh, all of that is then put together. So the me mechanical signal that we've just uh, obtained from, these, uh, 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 from this multiscale model is then passed to the, to the neuro neural uh, parts of the, of the model. And uh, the, the outcome uh, is shown on the top. So uh, we have spikes for a number of different tests which uh, generate what we call PCTH uh, diagrams. So they essentially are the diagrams that just count the number of spikes for a given, over a, a given period of time. Uh, these yellow ones, orange ones, are the models and the blue one are the experiments. And uh, you have seen that for the tethered uh, uh, postulate of the tethered ion channel opening, and here you can see it for the, for the uh, uh, stretch area. And you can see that there is really r reasonable correspondence between the, the predicted and the, and the measured values. We've got a number of various statistical measures to compare that, but we, I, I really don't have time to, to look at that. So to finish off very briefly, technological input of this work, so one of the technological in, in inputs is, is uh, to design no, new generation of haptic or, or tactile displays. For example, new smartphones should have uh, possibility to impart certain amounts of uh, tactile information to the user. So in order to do that, there are different techniques that can be used. One that uh, uh, we, we have looked at is the so-called electro-vibration. So you, you, you have a, a circuit here, so capacitor, uh, formed between the finger and, uh, and the device. The voltage really uh, uh, the, the 
develops here. So the force, that uh, Coulombic force is generated through the, through the voltage and the, the Coulombic force essentially can add uh, uh, an additional normal force to the, to the uh, interaction between the finger and the tactile uh, device. So that can be very well predicted. So uh, there are, there are uh, relatively simple formulae to do that. Uh, the difference is that we need to do it for a, for a shape of the, of the finger. So uh, uh, the model itself is relatively sort of uh, loosely coupled so uh, we can interact uh, between electro, uh, uh, electrical force and mechanical sort of deformation in a, in a loosely coupled way. Uh, and uh, really as the finger moves, we can actually generate the, the value of the contact force between the finger and the tactile device. Uh, the measurements have been done in, in Lille and uh, uh, very difficult to do as well and uh, correspondence between the model and uh, experimental values is, is very good. Uh, one possibility this, that is offered with this model is to do the so-called haptic rendering. So uh, we have looked at uh, creating reduced models of this uh, uh, force between finger and uh, tactile device, which can effectively compute this, uh, this necessary, uh, necessary normal force, which adds to the existing frictional force on the fly. And uh, by doing that, we can then modulate the voltage as the finger moves along the surface, and that voltage will impart different frictional force, which would then uh, essentially give the user the feel of a different, of a different texture. So uh, I'll show you one of the models. So this is uh, a, a model of the sinusoidal type surface. And this here is, is uh, 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 the, the voltage that corresponds to the, so voltage is here that corresponds to the measured friction along this particular surface. So uh, I've come to the end. So uh, the, the device itself has already been prototyped and uh, patented and uh, developments in this, uh, in this field are, are really uh, happening as we speak. So uh, to close, uh, main achievements of the work that we did uh, are in understanding, contributing to the understanding of the mechanics of touch. Um, in, terms, in terms of uh, future work, there is still really uh, a lot of work at, at cellular level uh, improving really understanding of the ion channels, adding some, some new ones. Uh, and uh, as, as I said, really technology is moving very fast and uh, some of the young people working in the group have already set up a company that makes these uh, haptic devices that now interact with the, with the virtual reality. Thank you very much. Yeah.